guys, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin. Today we are going to talk about what to eat, what not to eat when you have diabetes. Now, this question is very, very common, right? I get this question all the time. Now, patients will sometimes be surprised. Oh, I'm, I'm not supposed to eat uh, pizza? Oh, I didn't know that. I'm like, really? Or they'll say, uh, pasta? Oh, I love on pasta. I'm Italiano. What can I do? Or, you know, if you're, if you're Hispanic, I'm like, what are you talking about? Of course I'm going to eat rice. You know, you got to tell me something different, doc. Give me some medicine or something. This is the common, common <laughs> inquiries that I get from patients. Uh, and I, I, you know, I get it. Look, you know, I'm not going to tell you here, just stop everything and stop enjoying your life. Some people are can, some people can, but really, uh, you cannot ask an Italian to stop eating pizza. That's just not going to happen. Uh, but we can find a solution. I'm going to tell you right now, eat this, don't eat that. How about that? What we will do is what you cannot eat, but what can you replace what you cannot eat? And I think that will make you a little happier than eating nothing at all when it comes to starches. Let's talk about pasta first. You love pasta, but some of our favorite comfort foods are detrimental to our diabetic care, right? So my favorite alternative to standard pasta is shirtake noodles. Yes, you heard me right, shirtake noodles. These noodles have many different names, including Miracle Noodle and Pasta Zero. The shirtake noodle is made from a type of fiber called glucomannan that comes from Japanese cognac yam. The noodle will take on the flavor of whatever sauce or seasoning you use with it, making them extremely versatile. The benefits of incorporating this into your diet will be tremendous. It will reduce your insulin resistance because of the fiber content you are going to be able to absorb the carbohydrates at a much slower rate and as a result you will not have blood sugar spikes and the shirataki noodles already have a low carbohydrate content so as a result you can still enjoy a pasta without huge blood sugar spikes and guess what these amazing noodles come in variety of shapes it can be a fettuccine it could be a spaghetti or it can be even rice what else do you want right Okay, guys, let's move on. Okay, another big weakness, guys, is rice. Rice is something like, it's very hard to quit. If you grew up on rice, if everybody in your family eats rice, it is very hard to stay away from rice, okay? So we have to find a solution to that. Here is the solution. So, like we mentioned, shirataki rice is a great alternative to white rice. And cauliflower can also be riced and is very versatile due to its mild flavor. You can even find cauliflower in a riced form in the frozen section at the grocery store. A little known ancient called farro can also substitute rice in your dishes. Farro has a nutty flavor and is soft and chewy in texture. It is packed with fiber, protein and vitamins, minerals and antioxidants. That's what makes farro a good carb versus a bad carb as a, as, a, as a white rice. Again, as a result of high fiber content, guys, farro is also a great alternative to your rice, just like cauliflower rice or the shirtake rice. Okay, let's talk about potato. Not the coach potato, the, the food potato. <laughs> All right, food potato. Guys, who doesn't like potato? French fries, house fries, you name it. You can eat potato in any way. So, potatoes is something that's hard to quit. I know. All right, so cauliflower, again, like a magic, it comes to our health. But what else can you use other than that? Cauliflower, also, you can kind of use mash it, do whatever you want, you know, if you like the mashed potato. Um, but I mean, think about this. There are some other things out there that look like potato, and it, it, it sometimes tastes like potato, but they're not really potato. So one of them is taro, one of them is, is parsnip. So I think, you know, you should use to your advantage and just try, give it a try. 
don't be stubborn. Don't say no. I'm not gonna eat that. Nah, I can only eat potato. No, don't do that. Just just give it a try, and your taste buds will change. And I'm not telling you to totally quit potato. Maybe have a much less potato and try some of the other alternatives that you can have um, as uh, as an alternative to potato. Now another big thing is oatmeal. Now patients will tell me. I had oatmeal. They told me oatmeal is healthy. Why is my blood sugar is going so high after after breakfast? And if you're checking, of course, most people don't check after breakfast. When I tell them to check after breakfast, they almost have a heart attack from the high blood sugars they see. Now, the oatmeal comes in different shapes, right? So the, the instant oatmeal or the regular oatmeal you make, anything that's done quickly is just, just not going to work. So you are looking to get real steel cut oatmeal that is the oatmeal that's going to help you and also when you're preparing your oatmeal you know use saplanda instead of real sugar don't put a lot of stuffing on it a lot of dressing that will drive your blood sugars one of the big problem that people have when they are eating oatmeal they are using a lot of raisins now the raisins is a problem because anytime you dry a fruit you are actually concentrating the sugars and you don't realize but they are like sugar bombs so be careful with your raisins on your oatmeal and be careful with your uh, sugar even if it is brown sugar sugar is a sugar guys so stick with your steel cut oatmeal you can put nuts on it that's a great alternative because the nuts are going to keep you full and they're generally healthy especially walnuts so i'll suggest using steel cut oatmeals with walnuts uh, and with some sweeteners maybe one of the things that I like personally at the breakfast is also chia seeds. Now the chia seed pudding can be carby as well, but the good thing is it is it has a lot of fiber and it has a lot of nutrients. So as a result, I think that is another alternative to your regular cereal, which is horrible, uh, and regular oatmeal, which is not great. Uh, but your steel cut oatmeal will be your friend. Now, if your blood sugar is still spiking with steel cut oatmeal, then you gotta do something. You know, either you have to cut it totally off, but if you cannot give up on your um, oatmeal, then you have to take some sort of medication to try to avoid those blood sugar spikes. Now, of course, bread, 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 bread. Who does not like bread? Some people don't. Yeah, some people don't. Some people you may be watching right now. I don't. So what, right? So, but a lot of people love bread. Uh, especially that uh, morning bread, hot, you put some butter on it, it tastes good. I mean, you can't deny that. And once you become a diabetic, suddenly like, oh, no, you can't have that. You know, it's just kind of hard, right? So you are looking for an alternative, and I, um, I, I, I totally get it. Now, let's give you a couple alternatives, all right? So let's look at that. Now, one of the best things that you can do is... Um, malta grain which is sprouted grain bread these breads are high in fiber and and protein and they're very easy to digest so don't be fooled by whole wheat bread not every whole wheat bread is like 100 percent whole wheat so just because there's whole wheat in there doesn't mean that they are whole wheat totally so most of the whole wheat you find in the market today they are not 100 percent whole wheat and as a result they do not fit the bill now, on the other hand, the sprouted grain breads have a lot of fiber in there, and you can't miss that. I mean, this is this is available everywhere. Another another great bread will be Ezekiel bread, and that's also the very 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 healthy. Now, pumpernickel is also another alternative. It looks very brownish or almost black, and you may be turned off by the color uh, of the bread because you're used to the white bread. But uh, I mean, come on. Uh, it tastes still good. I mean, it, it, you just it's an acquired taste. Uh, but if you're looking for fresh bread and, uh, you know, you don't want to be killed by uh, the blood sugar spikes that come from the white bread, uh, you just, um, you know, you can just get used to the pumpernickel and next thing you know, you're a pumpernickel uh, bread fan. Um, I'm personally a fan of uh, uh, multigrain uh uh, bread but I, uh, everybody has has a choice uh, but I think you should give it a try uh, Ezekiel bread pumpernickel bread multigrain uh, and of course portion control is 
always going to be your friend. I'm not saying go have the whole bread. You know, maybe a slice if you cannot resist. If you have to have a bread, a slice of multigrain bread is going to be your best bet in that situation. Guys, we're going to talk more about what to eat, what not to eat at your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We will have a series about this. So stay tuned. I will see you in the next video. And remember, subscribe, share, and like this video so everybody can enjoy.